Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 15.4, the next one where we're going to talk about limits. This is a very important topic for calculus and it's just really a useful vocabulary to be able to describe what is happening. Now if you go to college and you take a real difficult calculus class, they'll make you learn a rigorous definition of limits involving these weird Greek letters of epsilon, delta, but we're not going to do all of that. We're just going to talk about limits as what I like to call woulda, shoulda, coulda. That you look at a particular function, it woulda gone somewhere if we had just kept going, but then something happened. And it didn't. Or maybe it actually really did, but it is about the hypothetical. So, you know, in English, uh, you can say things that aren't true in order to ask a question about the hypothetical. The, um, the tr summer seminar trips that you guys go on, somebody uh, goes to Spain, and, and then you find out that your friend, you, they didn't actually go. They didn't get to go to Spain after all. So you can say to them, if you had gone to Spain, where would you have gone? And they could say Barcelona or whatever kind of cities and things they were going to do, but they didn't actually get to do. So you're kind of assuming that it doesn't matter if it's true or not, but you're going to ask a question about it anyway. And this is something that we need to be able to do in math. We need to be able to ask what was going to happen, what should have happened, what would have happened, what could have happened, and the way to do that is limits. So, for example, if you have a function like f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, something we can't ask, we can't just say straight up, hey, what happened at 1? Well, if I try to plug in 1, I get 0 over 0, so this is, this is undefined. There's no way for me to be able to ask that question and get an answer. I don't know. There's no, there's no way. So what mathematicians invented was this other thing called limits. And a limit is where we write LIM, and then we write our variable right over there. We write our uh, variable, and then we say a uh, little arrow, and then we say where it was going. This is the where it woulda. I'm going to write woulda just to be cute. Where it woulda gone. And then we write the function, and I'm just going to be lazy and write f of x again. And so then there's our function. And now the question they're asking us is, what would the output of the function have been? What would the y value have been there? What would, and so what's going to go here when we get it is the output uh, that would have happened right there. Okay, so how do we think about this? How, what does x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 look like? Well, your first thought is to say this is going to be some kind of rational function, you know, with the asymptotes and crazy stuff like that. But notice the algebra helps you enormously. If you remember how to factor stuff, then you can see that x squared minus 1 is the same thing as x minus 1, x plus 1 and then that denominator was still x minus 1. And here's another vocab word for you. This graph, this function, has a moment where it is undefined. That was why we, weren't, we were not able to ask the question directly, what happens at 1, that there's a hole, there's a, a discontinuity is the fancy math word. And what's tricky, and you should write this down, is that the discontinuity is removable. We have a removable disc we have a discontinuity discontinuity. Uh, there's a removable discontinuity at one that I can make a new function that is not identical to the original function but is in fact more useful than the original function. You see how these terms right here you're just dying to cancel them. You're dying to cross them out. Well, if you do that, because there's a variable in the denominator, you're making something not 100% identical to the original. That this new one over here, the, the domain of this one right here was that x cannot be equal to uh, 1. Versus the domain of this new function that we've made, the domain 
is all real numbers, that anything can be plugged into there. So it's a more useful version, but it's not identical. So what does that look like? What is the graph of uh, x uh, plus uh, 1 look like? Well, if I draw my coordinate system, and then in red, I draw my graph here. And your calculator would do this for you, but I'm trying to go slow. So you can see that that's what the graph of x plus 1 looks like. But our original function had a hole in it. So we need to draw a little gap right there. So that's nothing too super excited about. So what does that mean? When we want to ask what was this function going to do, what would have happened, what should have happened if we had been able to plug in 1. Remember we said that's written the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x. Well, you can see, because this was a removable discontinuity, you can see that the y value would have been 2. So notice, f of 1, we said this already, is undefined. You cannot say what happens at 1, because nothing happens. But you can say what was going to happen at x equals 1. You were going to get a y value of 2. Okay? So, so this is why limits are so useful. And in fact, because we're talking about the hypothetical, all kinds of interesting things start to become possible for us to discuss that are not possible uh, when we're discussing straight up reality. And this is the same is true in, in English. You can say about your, um, your mom, what would she have been like if she had been a guy? That this is, these are all totally unreal things. You can't actually change from a girl to a guy, but you can um, think about it in the hypothetical. You can try to sort to use your imagination and figure out what it should have could have. So in math, I'll go on to a next function. I'll call g of x is our old friend 1 over x. And so we start to be able to ask questions that are um, a bit uh, confusing to, to, to say normally. Infinity is not a number. You, you can't just say, let's plug in infinity into this function. But because we're talking about limits now, I can say, what is the limit as x tends towards infinity of g of x. So let's let's sketch the graph and let's remind ourselves what 1 over x looks like. 1 over x is a rational function that goes through 1, 1 and has asymptotes at x equals 0 and y equals 0. So it looks like that. So now you can see that as I just sort of am an ant, it's sometimes helpful to just sort of imagine that you're a little two-dimensional creature walking along the graph, and as you go further and further to the right, where were you headed? Well, you were headed towards zero as you went off to the right. And not only can you plug in infinity, because this is a limit and not reality, you can also say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x. And again, we would just hop on our little graph and walk all the way to the left, and we would see that we're also trending towards zero over there. So that's the, the limiting value, that you can get as close as you want to zero. There's not actually any number you can plug in and get zero, but you can get as close as you want and just pick a particular x value that will result when flipped over in the, little ti the tiniest number you might want, and you can get as close as you like to zero going to either direction. So uh, let's see here. So now the, pr the question, though, starts to happen when we say, what was this thing going to do as we approach zero? That was terrible. Okay, so now the, the, question, the next question is, what is the limit as x approaches zero of, oops, uh, what is the limit as x tends towards zero of g of x? And so you might be tempted to think that the answer is infinity, that if we uh, step on our little graph and we walk towards zero, we're going up and up and up and up and up and up without bound. And, and indeed, there are uh, limits that do uh, have an answer of infinity like that. But the problem is, what if we had been coming from the left? What if we had been coming from over here and walking down the graph that way? So, so are we allowed to say plus or minus infinity? So this 
the, the parallel in English, the normal standard way of talking would be to say, if you were going to Mexico and Canada, where would you be going? And, and you can see there, even in the hypothetical, it becomes impossible to, to answer. You, even in make-believe land, there are some questions you can't answer. If a circle was a square, what shape would it be? Well, even if I make-believe, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. That's incoherent. In theology, you can say, if God can do all things, can God sin? Well, no, because that's contrary to his nature. And, but more deeply, you've asked a fundamentally incoherent question. You've asked a question that doesn't make any sense. So that's why we don't say that it's equal to infinity, that we say it even a limit can be undefined, or, as they said in Mean Girls, the limit does not exist. The limit, and then usually um, in math we write, does not exist, and people get very lazy and just write D and E, that people just write like that. So that's a perfectly acceptable answer to that kind of question. So then that kind of prompts you to say, well, obviously I could have answered that question if you had just stuck to the right side. And so then they've kind of modified the limits notation to be able to ask that question. What is the limit as x approaches zero? And then we have a little um, exponent of a plus, and that just means from the right side. And g of x was tending towards infinity, this is a from the right limit. And then, uh, of course, if we want to ask the other way, we can say the limit as x approaches negative uh, one, negative, or zero from the negative side of g of x, that that was negative infinity from the left. So limits can get absolutely bonkers. And there quickly become four kinds of questions that you can ask that um, you can say um, for some particular function the limit as x goes to 4 of h of x, the limit as x goes to 4 from the right of h of x, the limit as x goes to 4 from the left of h of x, and h of 4, that these are all different questions that you're asking. One is saying, where would it have gone when x equals 4? Um, where was it going to go from the right, from the left, and what actually happened? So maybe if I try to draw a crazy graph for you, let's, let's get absolutely bonkers here, and let's have a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll have a, an asymptote there. Um, that from this side we're going swoosh and from this side we're going towards uh, there in a straight line but this is what actually happens so this is h of h of x okay so now here's our crazy crazy function and you can see that Actually, at 4, what's the y value? This is the last question. I'm going to go through these backwards. What actually happens at 4? Well, there's a y value of 1. That's what actually happened. From the left, however, if we were sort of flying towards this function from the left, we were aiming at negative 2. From the right, we were aiming at positive infinity, meaning that when you try to come at this from both the left and the right at the same time, you got nothing, and it's D and E. So, that is a brief intro to limits.